Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be looking further at the Holbein acrylic gouache. This is special gouache from Holbein. It's like acrylic paint, it will set permanently. It can't be lifted like normal gouache. This makes it quite a lot easier to layer the paint with as the paint won't lift that's underneath. So I'm definitely going to experiment with this gouache in this painting so it's not going to be a fully polished piece as my normal artwork is. I did review this gouache in full and I will leave a link to that up in the iCards above. So first off, traditional gouache is said to be a blend between watercolour and acrylic paint. I find this to be rather false. I find that gouache is, traditional gouache is very chalky, very thick, very opaque. And while it can be painted and used like watercolour and can be painted thickly like acrylic, it doesn't have any other characteristics of the two paints. You can't paint it too thinly and layer it like watercolours because the paint will just lift off the paper. And you can't paint too thickly and layer too thickly either because you'll get cracking and other problems. I believe traditional gouache is more related to oil painting. I feel the techniques are a little bit more similar to oils than acrylics or watercolour. I really did experiment and use a range of techniques from both watercolour painting and from acrylic painting even though I've never painted with acrylics before very much. I use the paint both quite thin in washes like watercolour and thickly and blended wet into wet like you would acrylic paint. And the looks do vary slightly. Um, I find that it's definitely more true to the name hybrid paint than traditional gouaches. I definitely feel this is the true hybrid between watercolour and acrylic paint. It does have a slightly different look from watercolour and it also looks slightly different from acrylic. And it definitely looks like an in-between. It kind of has this slightly matte look but also from the acrylic look, acrylic effect, but it also has a really bright vibrant look which you normally get with watercolour painting. The consistency that you have to use acrylic wash in can be a little bit tricky, I feel. It's hard to know what consistency of paint to use. If you use it too thin and watery, you might as well just be painting with watercolour. And there are also some problems that you get later on when layering if you layer too thinly. But I'll get to that later. If you use the paint too thickly, you're going to get prone to streaks which is also a problem you don't want your painting to be too streaky. I found this lead to be a great study to test out the properties of this gouache. It's a botanical study and I'm used to painting botanicals so I felt relaxed when painting and I wasn't stressing or fussing too much over the actual image. And as well it also has some bright colours which 
it needed mixing, such as the greens, dark greens, the reds, the pinks, etc. All those needed to be mixed, so it was a good opportunity to see what they like when they mixed with each other. And as well, when doing this botanical painting, I did try to include as many different techniques and styles as possible when blending. As you saw earlier, I blended the leaves wet into wet acrylic style, and then I did also do some watercolour techniques with it, such as blending out with clear water. When it comes to building up layers of paint with acrylic gouache, it is slightly easier to do than with traditional gouache, but it's not as simple as it may seem. Getting the consistency of the paint correct is also very important. If you do go too watery and do a very watery paint wash, it does something a little bit funny and creates some very hard edges. The reason for this being is the paint sets permanently, so it kind of seals the paper a little bit, almost like acrylic but not quite. So if you put a big watery wash on top of this paint, it won't soak into the paper properly, it kind of just dries on top of the other layer of paint. So you can get some very difficult drying sort of effects, and it can create a harsh line by doing that as the paint's not soaking into the paper gradually. It's just drying on top of a layer of another paint. But you can paint thickly and wetly on top of other layers as they're not going to lift. The acrylic wash did have some of its own challenges, I'm not going to lie. I do still have to experiment a little bit more with this paint to get a consistency and way of painting with it that I really like. Because it is a hybrid, it's difficult to find that balance. I don't want my paintings to look as if they're done with watercolour because I do paint with watercolour and I want a slightly different look. But at the same time, I don't want to be like acrylic and have it look really thick and really blended like that. One of the other difficulties I had when working with this is the paint does dry rather quickly on both the palette and on paper. I have made a DIY stay wet palette with some tissue paper under some parchment paper and this does help quite a lot. On the paper it dries pretty quickly if you paint too thickly so don't paint straight from the tube because you'll find that the paint will just dry exceptionally quickly. I have only tried this on watercolour paper. I'm pretty sure you could probably paint with this paint on other surfaces such as canvas and paint with it thickly. One other frustration I found was that unlike with watercolour like I'm used to, I can't reuse the paint the next day, it's all dried on the palette. So I do have to be very sparingly when I pour paint out of the tube. Once it's out, it can't go back in. That all being said, I really did enjoy using this medium. It was very fun to paint with, it was nice to have those bright vibrant colours which I normally get when I paint with watercolours. And it was nice to have that kind of different style of blending. I could paint thickly if I wanted to and paint thinly when I wanted to. I found this very useful and helpful to do.
One thing which I found different to my usual watercolour is I can paint light to dark or dark to light. You can glaze with white paint using this medium. I would recommend maybe not doing it because it can leave kind of a chalky and strange texture on top. If you want to do that I would recommend mixing the white with the base colour and tinting it a little bit will hide the strange texture. In terms of the brand, Holbein gouache, acrylic gouache is really good quality. It's much better quality and behaves much better and performs much much better than their watercolour paint. The other brand of acrylic wash on the market is Turner's. I haven't tried that one and the whole by one is much more expensive. But going by this experiment here, I would definitely say the whole by may be worth it depending on the quality of the Turner's gouache. This is a really nice paint. I really enjoyed using it and I can definitely buy more tubes of this and I feel happy to spend that money on it. I don't feel like I'm being rubbed or being or paying for a product that doesn't live up to that value. I was super happy with the result of this painting, even though it was a little bit rough around the edges. But as I said, this is more of an experiment rather than a finished piece, and I'm quite happy with it. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this, and if you've tried acrylic gouache and any recommendations or thoughts on it I'd like to hear. If you're enjoying this video and enjoying the new quality of the audio and the visuals, as I have new lighting and a new microphone, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing if you want to see more. And if you would be kind enough and want to check me out more, I have links to my social media and Patreon page where you can also get discounts to my online shop and behind the scenes footage and exclusive content. I personally cannot wait to try more with the acrylic wash and to paint more with it. I'm definitely going to be doing some more painting. I'm really glad that I got a chance to try this product. And again, if you do want to find out a little bit more about it, make sure you check out the review video as it goes a little bit more in depth about the colors that came in the set that I purchased. So here it is, this is the finished painting all dry now, and you can see there's not too much of a colour shift, the colours have remained bright and vibrant, and they're very smooth, flat and matte. I really hope you enjoyed watching me paint this, and hopefully you'll check out my other videos. So thank you very much for watching, 
and hopefully I shall see you all again next time. Take care everybody, and bye bye.